good morning good morning it is Thursday May 13th 2021 yes yes it is and I hope you have your coffee this morning so very good and maybe you have a smoothie too there's my carrot orange pineapple smoothie yes good morning Karen so glad to see you <laughs> yes and good morning Susanna welcome and good morning Brenda bring in the love Paul and Sue so good to see you this morning Greg I hope you can get out kayaking soon the water is calling and good morning Abby so glad to see you and Ellen and Joyce good morning and good morning Tanya look at everybody coming in Elizabeth and maybe Abigail too good morning good morning Donna and Rob so good to see you this morning yes Leanne cheers with the coffee right like clink 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 all around such it is a beautiful day out I went for a paddle and uh, where I come around uh, the lighthouse that where the yacht club is there's a lighthouse and you go around the corner and I'm pretty sure a great blue heron is trying to build a nest there because every time I come around uh, it, it takes off so <laughs> it's almost like on cue I come around the corner and the great blue heron just takes off uh, my mug says Beijing on the inside so I got this mug when I was in Beijing and I'm like I can use that I can use that it reminds me that was uh, that was a fun trip I climbed the Great Wall of China and uh, that was that was a good trip that was my whole goal that was on my bucket list is to climb the Great Wall of China so good morning Linda it is a beautiful day please make sure you go outside today please make sure you go outside today um, so yesterday <coughs> life just got really really busy which happens and so I've taken to calling my mom at five o'clock so that uh, we can have a chat and then she can watch the news and so she actually called me at 5 15 and she's like how are you I'm like I'm fine mom it's just been a really really busy day she's and I just didn't have time to go for a walk today she's like oh okay so even my mom knows she <laughs> that I try to go outside and go for a walk um, so go outside today um, so yeah so the bird sightings for today are great blue heron I saw some mergansers lots of, of ring billed gulls I haven't seen a herring gull yet but they're around they have uh, they have pink legs instead of yellow legs and they don't have a ring around their bill that's how you tell the difference between a ring billed gull and a herring gull there you go that's your bird lesson for today and I also think I saw some starlings not grackles um, yes and a mallard duck I almost had a mallard duck on the way because they're in places they shouldn't be all right so we have been on <laughs> Okay, just hold on a second. Sparrow outside my window. I haven't figured out how to tell the difference between all the sparrows yet, but I will. Uh, we have been on this journey through Colossians, and I got stuck on the idea and concept of heaven. Um, and I did some research yesterday on Second uh, Corinthians uh, five, where it talks about where we get a new body, and it goes on to what the judgment seat is. And and I was like, oh, I don't like judgment. Okay, I need so I need to sit with that text a little bit more before I share it with you. So, because uh, that's what I was going to talk about today. I even said, Abby, this one I'm going to talk about today, but I wasn't just I just I'm not I'm not settled with it in my spirit yet. So I'm like, I need to sit with that passage. So I would encourage you to sit with that passage. Uh, maybe pull it out today, and we'll talk about it. we'll make a point of talking about it tomorrow. Now that I've announced it to everyone, so I'll tell you what the passage is, and we can sit with it. Um, so this is 2nd Corinthians 5 1 to 10 all right so sit with that passage and we'll talk about it tomorrow we can do some research <clears throat> and so as I was just saying okay Lord like 7 o'clock is coming and um, I get from 
LL Ministries. It's called Seeds of the Kingdom, and it's just a daily devo. And uh, and so I, I just I pulled it out and I started reading it. And um, as I'm reading it, I was like, this voice sounds familiar. And it was uh, written by one of the teachers that I had when I did my discipleship school there. And she just has, uh, her name is Jilly Lyon Taylor. And she just has this wonderful life experience with God. And as I was reading it, I was just, I could just feel like the tension just go. And I was like, okay, what else is she having to say this morning? So she was talking about hardships and trials and how they produce in us maturity and I was like mm, all right but what's interesting is if you go to the passage before the one we're gonna look at tomorrow second uh, Corinthians 4 uh, 16 and this sort of picks up from where we were yesterday where John 14 1 starts off with do not let your hearts be anxious right trust in God trust also in me um, for in my father's house there are many rooms if it were not so I would not have told you but I'm going to prepare a place for you right so that first part of do not let your hearts do not let your hearts be troubled right because God's preparing Jesus is preparing this place for us there's a place for us there's a room for us and so if you go over to uh, 2 Corinthians 16 it starts off in the same way therefore we do not lose heart and I'm like okay because I've had a couple opportunities in the last couple of days to lose heart and it's almost like my faith balloon goes <laughs> right can you I think we can all say I've experienced where my faith balloon just gets so deflated and so uh, this verse uh, therefore we do not lose heart though outwardly um, uh, we are wasting away Yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Though our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So this passage, it, it talks about, right? It's picking up from, from John 14. We do not lose heart, though outwardly, like we're looking around us and we're going, oh, and, and literally we can almost feel the air coming out. Outwardly, we are wasting away, but inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. Though, <laughs> that next part, right? For our light, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And I want to hold on to that word see. Because it doesn't make sense when you put it with the word uns when you put it with the word therefore we do not lose heart right in John it said John 14 one says um, do not let your hearts be troubled trust in God trust also in me right so that's it it's he's calling us into faith right he's calling us into faith uh, so our second Corinthians is doing the same thing therefore we do not lose heart right because we're not gonna fix our eyes on what we see we're not going to fix our eyes on what we see. We're going to fix our eyes on what we don't see, who is God, who, who we know who he is and his faithfulness. We know that Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us. And so everything on earth that happens here is, is preparing for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And so uh, as, I, as I was reading um, Jilly's uh, story, uh, her devo, she took us to... Uh, Joshua 6 and the interesting part of Joshua is so Moses has he Joshua was Moses's understudy basically his assistant his the number two chair right that's who Joshua was and it says that when um, Moses would go into the tent of meeting to meet with the Lord Joshua would go with him and when Moses went 
back into the community, Joshua would stay there and hang out with God. Mm, I love that story. And so as they go into the promised land, uh, once again, the Jordan River uh, opens like splits and, and everybody walks through on dry ground. I know they, they do it. He, the Lord does it again. And they're in the land. And so manna, because they can eat the food of the land, they don't need manna anymore. So some really cool things are happening. But a big obstacle is right in front of them. Does anybody know the name of that obstacle, that first obstacle that uh, Joshua and the Israelites met as they were, you know, going into the promised land? Does anybody know the name of that first big obstacle? Mm -hmm. So this, you might have to think back into the Old Testament. What was the name of that big obstacle that, um, yes, Elizabeth, Jericho is the name of the big obstacle. So uh, God, since Abraham, he had promised Abraham, I'm going to give my people, Israel, this land. All right, so this is a like 400 year old prophecy really long time and so uh, they've they've crossed into the promised land but there's huge obstacles in the way and even though god has promised it to them even though god has met every single need god has met every single need over and above what they could have imagined right they get to jericho and they're probably thinking okay what are we going to do so this is where we pick up the story so this is uh, Joshua 6, 1. Lord, as we read your word, open, open our eyes. Amen. Now, Jericho was tightly shut up because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered jo Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. What did the Lord say? I'm going to read it. There's a, a three-letter word, a three-letter word that I want, I want to, you to hear. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. What was the three-letter word that the Lord said to Joshua? That's the important word that I want us to hold on to. See. Had, had the Lord actually done the work yet had the city been taken yet that's the next question had the city been taken yet look at you guys you're getting there had the city been taken yet that's the question yeah had the city been taken yet had the city been taken yet no okay i got halfway <clears throat> the city had not been taken yet. And yet the Lord says to Joshua, see, I've given it into your hands. And I think if I was Joshua, I would be like, what are you talking about? They're, right? And then the next part is, is the crazy part, right? March around the city once and all the with all the armed men do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the sound... When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have all the people give a loud shout, then the wall of the city will collapse and the people will go up, every man straight in. And so he did it. He did it. And it happened. Right? So the things unseen, right? We do not fix our eyes on what is seen because it does not make sense. It does not make sense to walk around a property and the walls fall down. It doesn't make sense. And lots of people have said, well, maybe the weight of the Israelites walking around damaged the foundations of the wall. I'm like, really? I think sometimes, and I do it myself, and I caught myself even doing it today. Um, 
I see things that I can't necessarily fix, but I try to figure out how I am going to fix them rather than saying, God, how are you going to fix them? Right? So Joshua is looking at this going, you want us to do what? You want us to walk around? And, and God is saying, see, I've delivered it into your hands before it even happened. Before it even happened. And so when we think of our light and momentary troubles that are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all, like, it's a faith thing. God is calling us to faith in these things. And that is tough because it's hard, it's hard not just to see with our eyes. It's hard. It is hard. And are we able to see with the eyes of faith? This is what Jilly is saying. Are we able to see with the eyes of faith when facing difficulties? Can we see obstacles in our lives and recognize them as obstacles? opportunities for us to grow in our faith and to see God's hand at work are there are there any obstacles or opportunities or obstunities if you want to call them in your life at the present time if so let us count them as opportunities that are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we do not fix our eyes on what is seen, but what is unseen, right? If God has called us to it and we get to this city of an obstacle, if God has said, see, I've de delivered it into your hands, we have to sit with that. We have to sit with that. Okay, people. That's it. We're going to pray. Lord, see, 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 I have delivered the city into your hands and the king. Not just the property, but the people. Father, I confess trying to take things into my own hands to fix it. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And in those areas, for every single person who's listening today, in those things that we're really struggling with, we're, we're like, these ends just don't meet. Would you come and would you meet with us and would you put your hand upon us and would you just say, stop, child. Let me meet them. Let me fill in the gap. Let me bring the victory. Let me bring the victory. So, Father, help us not to fix our eyes on what is seen, but help us to fix our eyes on what is unseen. Lord, that we would not get caught up in, in the craziness of the light and momentary afflictions, troubles. But, Lord, that we would persevere and in faith believe that you're going to make ends meet, that you're going to tear down walls, and that you're going to bring the victory. Because you know what we need. And so, Father, would you help us to sit with you today and let you lead us? Would you give us eyes of faith? And we ask this in your name. Thank you for your goodness and grace. Amen. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. Um, yeah, check out the uh, Seeds uh, Seeds of the Kingdom LL Ministries uh, daily devotions and just come to your email. They're always so very encouraging. Anyways, you're going to go outside, like, and share, and have a great day. That's it. That's all. Bye.